Hello, everyone. My name is David Hay. The title of this talk is Matched Illumination Waveforms Using Multitone Sinusoidal Frequency Modulation. This work was done in conjunction with my colleague, Kishalia Anikari at the University of Rhode Island. And this work was sponsored by the Office of Naval Research, specifically the Summer Faculty Research Program. Brief outline of the talk. So I'll go over the matched illumination waveform design problem. Then I'll give an overview of the multitone sinusoidal frequency modulated or multitone SFM waveform model. Then I'll talk about how we can apply the multitone SFM model to the MI waveform design problem. Then I'll present some illustrative design examples. And then finally, I'll conclude. So the main idea behind matched illumination waveform design is that we're going to design the waveform and receiver to optimize the detection of a target type that's embedded in noise and clutter for which we have the power spectral densities. And so here's a basic block diagram describing the signal model. And this is based off of the model developed by Stephen Kane in his paper in 2007. So we transmit some waveform S of T. It's going to propagate through the medium and gets reflected by some target with an impulse response to G of T. That impulse response here is a simple point target, so it's an impulse function scaled by some complex scalar parameter, which is drawn from a complex normal process. Now, the waveform also encounters some channel response H of T, and this produces our clutter signal C of T, the convolution of the impulse response of the channel and the transmit waveform. We will assume that this is also a complex normal process. And then we also have additive noise, which we'll also assume is a Gaussian process. And these three components uh, sum up to produce our return signal X of T. And so the challenge is to extract that, that known signal embedded in this noise and clutter. And note that we're not including Doppler in this model. So we're not exploiting Doppler to try to pull that target signal out of the clutter. In fact, it's embedded right in there with the clutter. We're only going to be able to shape the waveform spectrum and modify the receiver to extract that target embedded in that clutter and noise. Now, the optimal detector, something that K derived in this paper, is expressed in the frequency name given by the following relation. S of F is the waveform spectrum, and FM is just discrete points in frequency. Capital M represents the waveform's time band of product, the bandwidth W times the pulse length, T. The metric for detection performance is expressed in the following relation. Right, and this D squared metric actually completely characterizes the receiver's probability of detection and probability of false alarm. So we get a receiver operating characteristic from this metric. And because of this, we're going to use this detection metric as our main metric of design performance in, in evaluating these waveform designs. Now, the waveform itself is constrained to possess a finite energy. The energy spectral density, or ESD, the magnitude square of the waveform spectrum, that maximizes that D squared metric is expressed in the following relation. It's in terms of the noise and clutter, power spectral densities. Lambda is a parameter that we can find from the finite energy constraint. And so we solve this equation, find lambda, and we can plug back in to get our ESG shape. Now, the types of waveform design solutions that we get from this basically follow this idea of water filling. And that's basically saying, put more waveform energy at the frequencies where the noise and clutter are the weakest. Now, these water filling techniques tell us what the optimal ESD shape should be, but it doesn't tell us what waveform realizes that ideal ESD shape. And this problem can be boiled down to a structured phase retrieval problem. Now we're gonna impose a couple of extra constraints on our problem, right? The waveform is going to have a finite band, and we're also gonna have a finite duration. But you technically can't have perfectly band-limited, time-limited waveforms. And additionally, we're also going to require that the resulting waveform has a constant modulus, which will ensure efficient transmission on practical radar and sonar transmitter electronics. When we combine these constraints, we'll likely result in a waveform that can't quite ideally match up to the, the MI waveform ZSD shape, but rather be an approximation to that ideal ZSD shape. And the question is, what's the waveform model that we should use that will provide that approximation and meet all these other design constraints? And so in this work, we're going to use the multitone SFM waveform model to do that. So it's a standard FM waveform model. So we have a rectangularly windowed complex exponential with instantaneous phase phi of t. The root e over t term simply normalizes the waveform to have a certain transmit energy. Now the waveform's modulation function 
which expresses the waveform's instantaneous frequency as a function of time, is given as the first time derivative of the phase divided by two pi. The multitonus FM's modulation function is expressed as a finite Fourier series. In this case, I'm using sine harmonics, but you could also include cosines as well. Now, if we integrate and multiply by two pi, we get a weighted sum of cosine harmonics weighted by these beta sig k, the modulation indices. These are given in terms of those Fourier coefficients b sig k according to this relation. Now, if we take a direct implementation of this FM waveform model, this is what we get for the waveform time series. This doesn't really lend itself well to deriving a closed form expression for things that we care about, such as the spectrum in this particular case. But it turns out we can actually represent this waveform in a different manner, and that's actually as a complex Fourier series. In fact, we can truncate it to be a finite complex Fourier series with some generic set of coefficients used to them. Well, if we use these generic coefficients, this is effectively a multi-carrier or OFDM type waveform model. We'll actually impose a specific type of structure on these coefficients, and they're going to be m quarter modified generalized Bessel functions. They're generalized in the sense that they accept a multi-dimensional argument. Otherwise, they behave very much like the standard modified Bessel function. These coefficients will ensure that the waveform has a constant modulus. And from here, we can derive a very simple expression for the Fourier transform of the multi Jonas FM. It's simply stated a weighted sum of frequency shifted sync functions. And this was derived in a paper I did for high shifted transactions on electronic systems that just came out. So now the challenge is how do we design the waveform spectrum to fit that ideal MI waveform BSD shape? Well, here's a heuristic method that we came up with that attempts to do just that. So the first step is we find the optimal waveform ESD shape. That's the magnitude square of this S naught of F that we're, call, what we're calling it. And we're gonna assume that S naught of F is simply the square root of the ESD. We have no phase information, so we will not impose any phase structure into the problem. The next step is to find the generic set of OFDM coefficients C sub M that fit to that ESD shape. In matrix form, if we dis discretize the problem, we could express this vector S naught in terms of some matrix X times the coefficient vector C. X is a discretized frequency shifted sync function matrix with frequency spacing M over capital T. Now, if we sample at Nyquist and use this frequency spacing, this matrix X is square and the columns are orthonormal. So we can simply solve for C via the matrix inversion. These are generic OFDM coefficients, however, and they will not result in a constant modulus waveform. In order to get that, we must find the best generalized Bessel function fit to C sub M. Now, these generic OFDM coefficients will be real, but not necessarily positive. And the generalized Bessel functions can be complex and can actually have a rather complicated phase structure. For them. So what we're going to do is we're going to minimize the L2 metric between the magnitude square of the generic OFDM coefficients C sub M and the generalized Bessel functions. And we're going to do that by, modif by modifying these modulation indices and providing a fit to this L2 type metric. We're placing a constraint on the arguments to make them less than m over two. And this just ensures that the generalized Bessel functions has the majority of its, its um, region of support over plus or minus capital M over two. Now this objective function is quartic in a non-convex objective function. So there's no guarantees on global optimality. However, similar objective functions have been used in the structured phase retrieval community and so, and, and it actually has produced generally useful results. So what I'm gonna show next are a series of illustrated design examples where we actually fit multi-tonus FMs to ideal MI waveform uh, spectral shapes. So there's two cases that we'll be looking at here. And I'm showing the power spectral densities for those two cases in the top two panels. So note that the noise power spectral density is the same for both cases, but the clutter is different. In the first case, called the clutter peak case, the, um, the, the power spectral density is an oscillatory function with a clearly defined peak of DC. In the clutter notch case, we have a largely flat spectrum with a clearly defined notch at DC. The corresponding panels below these plots show the resulting MI waveform ESD shapes for a variety of transmit energy values. 
The general takeaway is that as we increase the transmit energy, the waveform occupies a wider bandwidth and has a more complicated ESD shape. In the clutter P case, is a largely oscillatory spectral shape, except for the really large transmit energy case, which is almost becoming a flat spectral shape. In the clutter notch case, we had this clearly defined peak at DC, but the rest of the energy spread rather evenly across the band. The challenge now is to fit the multitone SFM model to these ideal ESD shapes. In order to measure the, the goodness of fit to these ESD shapes, we're gonna use that D squared metric. So we're gonna compute the D squared metric of the ideal MI waveform, the D squared metric for a, a series of multitone SFM waveforms for a variety of transmit energies. And also as a means of comparison, we're going to then compute the detection metric for a flat spectrum, or in this case, a linear FM waveform with an equivalent bandwidth to that of these MI waveform designs. So here I'm showing the results for, for the clutter and uh, peak and clutter notch cases uh, for a, a range of transmit energies. So the green curves represent the detection metric for the MI waveform. The red curves represent the detection matrix for that flat spectrum or LFM waveform. And then the box plots represent a series of trials composed of a thousand multitone SFM waveforms optimized using the method I just showed two slides ago for a variety of the same, the same set of transmit energy values. So these box whisker plots are uh, representing the results from those waveforms. So the red line denotes the median of the data. The box represents the second and third quartiles. The whiskers are spaced 1.5 times the interquartile length out. And those black circles represent statistical outlines. So let's take a look at the clutter peak case first. So for low transmit energies, on average, the multitone SFM, while it can't quite meet the the detection performance of the ideal MI waveform, it's certainly outperforming a flat spectrum shape. So it's better than just placing energy equally across the band. As we increase the transmit energy though, the, the performance of the multitone SFM trends a little downward. And in fact, on average is not doing quite as well as the LFM, though there are a few outliers that, that still will outperform the LFM. What's happening here is that as we're increasing the transmit energy, Recall that that ideal ESD shape is starting to become a little more flat across the entire band. Well, that actually favors an LFM type design that has equal energy across the band. And so that's one of the reasons why we think we've got this sort of result. Now with the clutter notch case, it's a slightly different story. Again, while the multitone SFM can't quite achieve the optimal detection performance, it is easily outperforming the LFM. Well, why is this happening? Well, recall that the, the clutter notch case had a very clear peak at DC, followed by spreading the rest of the waveform's energy kind of equally across the band. This is something the LFM really can't match up to. It's, it's placing energy equally. It can't put energy in a specific band of frequencies the way that the multitone SFM does. And that's why the multitone SFM is easily outperforming the LFM in this particular case. So the general takeaway is that while the multitone SFM does not achieve the, the detection performance of the ideal on my waveform, it generally outperforms the performance of flat spectrum waveforms over, over a variety of transmit energy values. And really it has an edge when that ideal ESD shape varies substantially across the operational band. So to conclude, the multitone SFM waveform model possesses a discrete set of design parameters that we can adjust to synthesize waveforms with desirable characteristics. Additionally, in this talk, we utilize the multitone SFM model to synthesize finite duration, finite bandwidth, constant modulus waveforms that approximate the ideal MI waveforms ESD shape. And the simulations show that while the multitone SFM does not approach the, the ideal detection performance of that, of that MI waveform, it can generally outperform the detection performance of flat spectrum, in this case, linear FM waveform, over a variety of energy values when the noise and clutter power spectral densities vary substantially across the band. This concludes my talk. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I look forward to taking all of your questions and uh, let's hope that in the next SSP workshop, we'll be able to interact in person. For now, take care.